We're a small PA hire company, uh, deal with a variety of clients. Um, in August this year we bought the Allen & Heath iLive, we bought the T80 Surface, along with an IDR32 mix rack. Um, I can say in all honesty it's the busiest system we have. It, um, it does all sorts of gigs. It was ideally uh, initially bought to do smaller sort of theatre type gigs um, with you know when, when you're constrained to having a one-man one-van system and doing sort of theatres up to about 600 seats but consequently since then we've used it on all sorts of much bigger um, much more in-depth rock and roll jobs um, it's been ever so ever so busy we've had it out for a month with uh, the twang that was a pretty successful tour we also had it on um, Leeds Festival this year doing monitors on the comedy stage uh, that got us a lot of very very positive feedback as well I suppose it's worth saying that we nearly always get positive feedback when we're out with the iLive system um, we can do things very very quickly um, people generally compliment on the sound um, and I've, I've had quite a lot of that going on not just with myself using the board but other people so it's obviously a common thing to the, uh, the iLive itself we chose to buy it um, after weighing up various systems, just based on basically the, the amount of uh, features available. We particularly like the, the effects on board, we were very very pleased with those, there were some uh, sexy sounding reverbs if I may use that word, um, great um, sort of the delays and stuff, it's all really really easy to use. Um, the surface layout is, is pretty useful in that there is none, you can put it exactly how you want it. So um, a typical layout for myself um, when doing monitors, for example, would be to use the um, user-defined keys, which are here in my imagination, to uh, select an PFL and mix. So you actually select it, push the mix button and PFL it. So you've got eight mixes perhaps, and um, as soon as you press one it appears in your listen wedge and you have the mix up on the fader so you can make any adjustments you want to straight away. Uh, that tends to make things really quick and easy. Um, on the Twang Tour, for example, in various venues, we use the iLive to mix the support bands with um, house engineers. And within you know minutes, most of the time, I gave them a very brief talk through and said, look, ask me if you've got any questions. And uh, the vast majority of them, even those who had never used a digital desk before, got on really, really well with it. Um, the guys at the lead mill in Sheffield, which was the first date we did with the Twang, were sort of mortified to see us bringing in two small digital desks. Um, and we had the iLive on stage. The chap using it hadn't seen a digital board before, um, and what he had seen scared him. And after mixing the two support bands, he was really, really comfortable with it. He, you know, he had the usual sort of digital desk things where you have to get used to pressing select before you perform your operation. But after that, it was great. Um, going back to the same tour again with the Twang, their stage sound was dreadfully, dreadfully complicated. Um, we run 10 mixes from the iLive, Live, um, two of which were stereo in ears, and five effects were running on stage, a lot of which were going on in wedges and side fills and all over the place. Um, so it was a very, very challenging gig in which you needed to really keep on top of things. And uh, I, I found it really, really helped us do that. So listen, tell us about your career. How did you get started and stuff? Right, well, for a start, um, I, I used to play in bands, and as most people are, failed musicians. Um, I started off working for a, a, a colleague, well, he's now a colleague in Mansfield at Loud and Clear Productions. He gave me a lot of work maintaining uh, systems and doing warehouse jobs. Now, in that, we, um, I'd sort of learned a lot about fault finding, how systems go together. Um, basically just sort of learned the roots of the business without being out on the gigs and then I pestered and pestered and pestered and started to get various bits of uh, local work where I originally lived in Scunthorpe um, and worked for a while up there for a variety of companies uh, doing theatre touring throughout the UK I uh, got involved with some, some more companies across the way um, doing festivals etc and found that we really liked the festival stuff and over the years kind of picked up really good ideas from what various people were doing and and sort of thought well what if all of those good ideas were in one place not to blow my own trumpet but um, that was kind of the aim of starting Black Magic Audio now 
the, 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 the aim for a start was to do sort of small pub gigs almost and then up to like a few hundred people in a town centre that was as big as it was going to get anyway since we've supplied gear to all sorts of clients you know it's grown and grown and grown and grown um, don't really see it stopping anytime soon we, we started in 2005 right at the very end did our first live gig in 2006 and since have acquired a fairly substantial stock of um, PA equipment and you know a variety of solutions so um, at some point you may be thinking of getting another one, is it? Yes, um, just due to the nature with the iLive 80, um, the, the fact that there are 20 faders is ideal for, for the original criteria we bought it for, which was to do small theatre work. However, with the desk going out on bigger and bigger jobs and, you know, I, I don't really see an end to it, but I would like to have more physical control. So I'm considering buying a, a T112 next year. And who'd you buy this one from? This one was bought from LMC Audio in Birmingham. Cool. Um, been dealing with them for a while. Sean bought it up in the back of his car, which was I think a Peugeot 306 at the time. Testament to its uh, small size. Cool, I think I did the demo, didn't I? Yes, it? yes, uh, yeah, Martin yourself came up and we had uh, three or four different people here, all of whom left very impressed. Um, and and certainly I know still saying that if they had to buy a digital desk, that's the one they would buy.